I use this bandsaw for cutting metal and making knives. You get a lot of these little metal chips from cutting all that steel. And I was wondering, can I forge a knife out of this material? Let's find out. So I figured uh, this would be a not too difficult project, but I ended up having several failures along the way, so I had to keep trying until I got it right. Uh, using a one inch canister, making canister Damascus out of the saw chips along with some scrap steel I had and some powdered uh, steel with nickel silver in it. Got that all put together, welded a handle on it, and put it in the forge and went to go forge out my billet. All that went pretty smoothly. I was able to get the billet out of the can and it uh, didn't look too bad. I didn't see any real defects in the billet so I welded a handle on it and went to start forging it out and then I saw that it had cracks. So that was the first failure. And what I did then was try to grind those out. That didn't work. So I ended up just cutting that billet into three pieces and then putting that those pieces back into another canister along with some powdered steel just to try and salvage the material that I had and went and forged another billet out of that. And uh, again, that one came out looking not too bad. So I welded a handle on it, knocked the edges off, and then when I went to twist it, uh, it crumbled. So that was the second failure and at that point it was pretty much toast. So I went back to square one, got my saw chips. This time I made sure I washed all those chips real good in acetone and get any oils uh, off. There, there was probably some oil cutting fluid on there left over from the bandsaw. And then I mixed the chips uh, in a little cup with the powdered steel, partly because I thought uh, those chips were large enough that there might be some air gaps in there and I wanted to just try and, and mix it as well as I could uh, with the powdered steel and use some more scrap pieces and put that back in the third canister and forge that uh, to make my billet cut the can off again everything went pretty smoothly. I did see a hairline crack in there and I tried to to grind that out. That's where you see a little bit of a indentation on that billet there. Um, but I didn't get it all out. So I can see another crack. And after grinding the surface, you can see it even better. So what I decided to do at that point was just cut it in half with the saw right where it was cracked and then take the two ends of the billet and try and forge those uh, forge weld those together so that I could still uh, salvage the material and, and get a knife out of it. So I welded the ends with my big welder, the, the edges, and soaked it in kerosene. I didn't use any flux. I uh, just went straight into the forge with it and then forge welded those two pieces together. initial light blows and then uh, slightly harder blows once I felt like I, I had a good forge weld. So just to verify that it did uh, weld together, I cut the handle off, ground the edges down so I could see it. It looked like it was pretty good, so it was going to work. So from there I went and I could go ahead and start forging my knife. I started uh, forging the handle and I uh, tried to uh, drop the billet every now and then. I was successful at doing that. So this is not a very large uh, billet from a one inch canister. It was about four inches long. So it doesn't give me a lot of material to make a very large knife. The, the overall length of this knife is about six inches, three inch handle, three inch blade. So it can make a good, maybe a neck knife or a little EDC knife. Once I had the handle shaped and forged out, then I moved over to start forging the blade. 
I really, it was a little wide and I needed more length. So I'm just trying to draw it out best I can to get more length. And I'm being careful to look at my thickness. At this point, it's still thicker than the handle. And what I wanted to end up with is as, cl as close as I could get the same thickness along the whole knife. I mean, the handle thickness the same as the blade thickness. So I just uh, went between using the peen side of the hammer, try and draw that out, and then hammering on the, the edge and keep it as straight. So I had it all forged out and uh, now it was time to take it over to the surface grinder attachment on my 2x72 belt grinder. Get the scale removed and get good flat surfaces on each side of the knife. Once I had that done I did a test etch in ferric chloride so that I could get an idea of what kind of pattern I was going to have. You can see there the lighter lighter area is the powdered steel darker area is the carbon steel so I just kind of looked at it I didn't really have an idea of what kind of shape I wanted and drew out a, a rough profile of what I wanted the knife to look like cut that out on the bandsaw and then uh, did, did the final profiling on the belt grinder Got all the edges roughly profiled the way I wanted them. I normalized the blade in my Paragon kiln at 1575 Fahrenheit. Let it air cool. And I marked out where I wanted to make the pinholes. Took those over to, uh, and took it over to the drill press and drilled those out, those holes out. Once I had the holes drilled out, uh, I refinished the surface and got rid of the burr. So I figured since this blade was made from scrap material that I should also make this handle scales from scrap material. So I had an old knife block uh, from a previous knife and there was some excess material on there and I was able to cut that material out and use, use some of that for the scales for this uh, this knife. I had to get them uh, sanded down and flat. Uh, once I did that I used uh, some little clamps to clamp the scales to the knife handle so I could line up my pinholes, drill those holes out into the scales, and I assembled the knife, uh, the scales and the pins onto the handle the knife so that I could do a pro, uh, profile of the handle material. Try to get that profile as closely as I can before I do the glue up. Uh, mainly because I didn't want to, to uh, grind much of the finish off of the, the steel part of the handle. So on the forend of the scales. I marked that out about what kind of shape I wanted that to look like and I pinned the two scales together so that when I ground it it would be symmetric. For the heat treating, I uh, heat treated this knife at 1475 Quinston Parks 50. I did all the bevel grinding after the heat treat. The knife was a little on the thin side and I didn't want to have any warps which I actually did end up with a slight warp and I had to straighten that out. I hand sanded it up to a thousand and then did uh, etching in three to one ferric chloride. I did multiple 
etches, probably four or five etches with sanding of in increasing finer grit sandpaper between each etch. And then I finished finally with the coffee etch. I did the glue up. I used uh, G Flex epoxy for the glue up. And at this point, it was really just uh, finishing out the handle. Did a rough grind uh, on the handle with 220 grit sandpaper and then finished that out by hand. Hand sanded it up to 1,000. Those are nickel silver pins that I'm using there. And I used uh, a little one by 30 sander to put the edge on. I got it razor sharp. And that was the finished knife. Like I said, it's not, not a real big knife probably make a good EDC maybe a neck knife well I hope you enjoy the video thanks for watching we'll see you next time